In this video we're going to talk about process capability. Now to do this we're going to look at uh, the application of a little bit of statistical thinking in terms of looking at the capability of a process, the capability of meeting the specifications required. Uh, the specifications required of course comes from the customer or from the designer who wants uh, the uh, process to meet precisely uh, the requirements of the task. So it's going to be slightly statistical in thinking because we're going to look at the capability of the process. In other words, we're going to try and measure the capability of a process. So process capability refers to the ability of the process to meet the specifications set by the customer or by the designer. So it's the abil ability of the process to meet the specifications. So if clearly the, the process meets the specifications then that's acceptable. If it doesn't, it's not acceptable. It's not capable of meeting the specifications. So we have got um, a standard of judgment here. We can judge a system's uh, effectiveness by its ability to meet the specifications or not to meet the specifications as the case may be. The objective is to determine how well the output from a process meets the specification limits. So that's the objective. See how well the output from a process meets the specification limits and then also compare the total process variation and tolerance. Look at the variation in the, the process. Look at the variation in the, the output from the process and to see if it's acceptable to the customer because outputs may vary in terms of their attributes, their, their qualities, their measurements, their suitability. So it's a it's a question now of looking at the the process and seeing if its output is acceptable or not and of course the way we would do that is by looking at uh, some sort of statistical measure but some sort of quantitative measure is the ideal way of doing it there are other ways of doing it it may be that the output is produced and then sent to the customer and the customer may reject it because it doesn't meet the specifications required. But that's not a good way of behaving in terms of management because it means the customer has been inconvenienced and the customer may be upset and the customer may therefore have a negative view of the product and the business. So it's far better if what's acceptable and what's not acceptable is picked up internally and dealt with internally. We can see it as this type of uh, arrangement here. We have a target specification. This is what the customer wants. Or if you like, this is what the designer wants. Or this is what the marketing department recommends. That the product should have the following specifications. And they're set out. That's the target. It's in the center as we can see it. But we know that in terms of production and what happens in practice, there may be variations in the uh, sizes or the standards used or whatever. Now clearly the further the variations are from the target in a sense the less acceptable they are. But we would have let's say a lower specification limit and say that's as far from the target as we can go on one side. And that's as far as we can go on the other side, the upper specification limit. So if it lies between the lower specification limit and the upper specification limit is acceptable. But if it lies outside of those limits, it's not acceptable. It's gone too far. The variation is too much. It's too far from the target. You'll note here I've got minus three sigma and plus three sigma. Well, uh, the reason for that is that these are standard deviations, standard deviation of or standard errors maybe, of the, the variation. So when samples have been taken of the output and their measurements taken, the standard deviation can be calculated, or the standard error. And 
they are different standard errors and standard deviations but I'm just saying here that type of calculation can be conducted then if we multiply it by 3 we get 3 sigma on either side of the target now the reason why 3 sigma is important is because this 3 plus 3 is 6 That's this is known as 6 sigma and 6 sigma is a very important concept in quality and in the measurement of quality in terms of the acceptability of a product. Six Sigma is the total variation and with Six Sigma it means that about five in a million are outside of that variation so it's almost the entire normal distribution almost the entire normal distribution are, are, between, are under the limits there are between minus 3 and plus 3 sigma so almost the entire population is under the curve between those limits so we'll talk about six sigma by the way in separate videos it's a very important concept in terms of quality uh, but it arises in other videos we're not going to deal with it in this one but it's important to mention it and that's why we've got the three and the three it's called six sigma and that's uh, an issue in quality that should be understood but dealt with elsewhere okay so having said that individual value, uh, values compared with averages well when distributions of averages are compared to distributions of individual values the averages are grouped closer to the center value than are the individual values and this is described by the what's known as the central limit theorem so the the grouping of averages if we take um, averages say 10 items and take an average and take another 10 items and take an average then we work out the grouping of those averages you'll find it's very close to the center it's very close to the target and this is known as the central limit theorem so what we're looking at really is the the distribution of averages the relationship between the standard deviation for individual values and the standard deviation for their averages is given by this formula uh, you see here the sigma and there's a little x with a bar on top uh, on the left hand side well when you get a variable get an x with a bar on top it generally means an average so the variation, the standard deviation of the averages, that's the term on the left hand side, is equal to the standard deviation of the population of the individuals divided by the square root of the sample size or of the population. But uh, this formula is a way of looking at the relationship between the uh, distribution of averages and the distribution of individual values now if we look at the first case here when we're comparing specification limits and using this idea of six sigma uh, case one is when six sigma that's the minus three plus the three on the diagram on the bottom three standard deviations either side of the the target or of the mean if you like when that is less than the upper specification minus the lower specification when that's less than that's most desirable uh, so you can see here that the upper specification limit and the lower specification limit lie outside the uh, the curve almost well in terms of what we've drawn here you can see that this line here lies to the left of the minus 3 sigma and the line over here the upper specification limit lies to the right of the plus 3 uh, standard deviations so in this case this is acceptable uh, it, it means that the the variation is well within what is required so the customer has specified uh, a target but the customer will accept anything up to the upper or anything down to the lower 
and you can see here that six sigma is well within that and that's that is the most desirable this is the second case where where if you like the lower specification limit and the upper specification limit in this case they would move until they are just at the minus three sigma and at the plus three sigma so in this case six sigma is equal to the difference between upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit and that's okay that's acceptable as long as the process remains under control of course finally the third case is when six sigma is greater than the upper and lower limits this is the undesirable process process incapable incapable of meeting the specifications Go back to the diagram for a second uh, in this case the lower specification is somewhere in here and the upper specification is somewhere here well you can see that six sigma is greater and therefore um, that's not acceptable that's, that is not desirable now it may sound a bit a little complicated this particular session but this is a way of looking at what is acceptable from a customer's point of view and what the capability of the system is so if process capability is able to meet the customer requirements of course that is acceptable that's good but the customer will set a target the customer will have uh, in his or her mind what is acceptable there will be an upper limit and a lower limit in terms of acceptability and it's important for the company for the process within the company to operate within those limits if they don't uh, operate within the limits the product will not be acceptable and that's what we mean by process capability that's all I'm going to do here it's a, quite a short video but a little technical uh, takes a little bit of thinking about it it's important to go back over it look ahead and take some time and later on when you meet Six Sigma properly uh, it will make a lot more uh, sense to you but at the moment I've tried to deal with it in a, in a way that uh, reduces it down to quite straightforward thinking the customer has a target in mind a target of what is acceptable the customer will therefore have an upper limit and a lower limit on tolerances so that the product can vary between limits upper and lower and if the company produces inside of that gap that is acceptable to the customer if the company produces outside of that it is not acceptable there's too much variation in the product so that's all I'm going to deal with in this class so I'm going to leave it there and say thank you for watching